Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. This is the last lecture for the second week. This is unit number 5 and lesson number 10 totally. Uh, in this lesson, I am going to introduce a new concept and which is a very important concept as far as developing your personality and enhancing your soft skills are concerned. It is on assertiveness, subtitled, do not say yes to make others happy. And before we begin, as I do always, I will try to give a brief highlight of what we did in the last lesson. In the last lesson, I dealt with various aspects of overcoming procrastination and discussed about 13 aspects. To begin with, I asked you the question, if you have to do some overwhelming task, okay, that is if you have to eat the elephant, what would you do? You have to break it into pieces, that is you have to eat the elephant bite by bite. You have to break any overwhelming task into manageable small units and then plan it within the feasible time and start doing the first activity in terms of working it on a small piece, small task and then the second one, do the difficult task first. Once you have broken that into pieces and then identify various tasks, identify the most difficult one and then start doing that first. This is what is called by Brian Tracy as eat that frog and then there are other writers who call that as eat that veggie. I also said that you should use case and principle in case you are feeling so lazy and so stuck not even to start. So, case and principle is to do something at the same time at least for a minute each day consistently and this consistency will slowly make you develop interest into the subject and make you work wonders. Within let us say 2 weeks of time, you will be gaining that flow. Now, the next aspect of uh, overcoming procrastination is to create a positive environment to work. Your work will progress only if you are able to create a positive environment. If the table is too untidy, if the surrounding environment is completely unclean, you will not be able to focus. So, I suggested that you try to uh, keep the most important activity on your table, keep the table clean, do it at least twice in a day, so that you are able to focus and finish that most important task first, eat that frog and then go to the next one. Now, apart from all these things, you will not be able to overcome procrastination if you do not set goals that you really want. So, you need to ask whether you uh, really want the goals, whether you really want to achieve those goals and if not, if you can delegate that to someone, do that. If you can avoid doing that, do that. But once you know that it is the goal that you want, only then even Kaizen principle will work. You will develop interest in that goal. The next step of identifying uh, whether you really want the goals or not is to find out why you want that goal. So, like for instance, uh, somebody wants to reduce her weight just because she wants to wear a good dress. So, you identify why you want this and for what purpose. Because once you know why you want the goal, you will try to achieve it anyhow. And then the next step is to declare your goal. So, do not keep the goal with yourself and try to declare this to as many friends, as many of your peer group as possible. By declaring what happens, there is a kind of uh, pressure that you put around you and there is a kind of moral responsibility that you live up to the expectation of others that you have created on your own. So, try to declare your goal and maintain records of accomplished goals. So, whenever you achieve small things, keep a log book, maintain a record. So, in case of reducing weight, if you reduce from uh, 160 to 60, keep a picture of you, even you frame it in a golden frame and then keep something for your memory and that will keep you motivating to take difficult task. 
Now, in case you think that the task is too difficult, try to turn difficult tasks into games, try to use play mode, try to make it fun. So, try to uh, instead of looking at it in a serious manner, so make uh, the task dividable and then uh, involve a group and then use certain rules that you will use it in games and then make it look like a game. The next important thing is treat yourself. It is very important that once you accomplish a task, you should treat yourself, you should reward yourself. So, again in case of uh, reducing weight, if you have uh, achieved a target and so far if you have been depriving yourself of eating ice creams, do that. Okay. So, once you know that you have achieved a very impossible task, it is time to treat yourself. So, that will again try to motivate you to uh, achieve tougher tasks further. Apart from all these things, I also added a very interesting aspect of procrastination. I said procrastinate positively. So, what is this positive procrastination? Uh, negative procrastination will mean you not only delay, but also deny. Positive procrastination will mean you are delaying but not denying doing the work, but you are doing some other work and then you are making a trade off. Now, there were six other tiny tasks which, which appear to be quite difficult and now this one big frog of a task that is looking so ugly and so unpleasant. Now, you just trade off, you say that okay, let me finish those six small jobs and then come back to you. So, you are you are delaying, you are procrastinating with a good purpose in your mind that you will do something else to break the monotony, to gain some flow and then come back with some renewed energy to do this task. So, procrastinate positively where you do not deny the task, but then you delay for a time being said that you are going to come back with renewed energy and then you will be able to do it much better and more uh, creatively. The last two points that I wanted to uh, discuss was above all just do it. I am trying to make you do a task by giving lot of suggestions, but the most important one is the will to do it. Just do it no matter what. And then the last golden rule I was suggesting to you is that if you start something finish it. And in that context. I suggested that you should remember Zigornik effect, which always implies that whenever we have some unfinished tasks, our mind is wired, rewired to go back to that unfinished task. And unless you finish that task completely, mind will keep on leaking into your memory, it will keep on nagging you it will keep on telling you, oh that is left unfinished. So, on the negative side, it is this Zigarnik effect that is uh, making you glued to TV serials and make you watch it again and again because of that feeling what happens next. But on a positive note, you can use this to beat procrastination. If you remember that your mind is not going to leave you, it is going to make you come back and then it is going to remind you and then it is not going to give you complete peace. So, once you realize that you will not skip because for your own comfort you will go back complete the work. In fact, as I said before, if you start something finish it. So, do not leave anything unfinished. With these tips, with these suggestions, I hope that you are able to overcome procrastination. Now, having overcome procrastination, you have also learnt how to manage time and at the beginning we started with having a growth mindset. Now, the next important aspect of developing, enhancing your personality as well as soft skills is related to being assertive. Now, in this lesson, I am just going to introduce the concept of assertiveness without talking much about assertiveness and at the end of uh, this lesson, I will just leave with the definition and one small exercise for assertiveness. But I just want you to think about it 
And then let us start by asking this simple question, have you ever said yes when you really wanted to say no? Look at the situations, you said yes to a vanilla flavored ice cream when you actually wanted a mango flavor, you said yes to an ice cream when you actually wanted a hot cup of coffee, you said yes to the man or the woman of others' choice when you actually wanted to marry someone else, the life partner's choice itself was not of your own choice. Somebody said that he must be a good choice or she looks good for you and you trusted that, but you did not make the choice. You said yes to an engineering course when you really wanted to pursue a career in fine arts. So, it is not necessarily an engineering course, any course not of your choice, but somebody chose that for you. You said yes to your job because all others think it is good for you. Even the job you said yes, because everybody around you thought that it is a good job for you. You said yes to signing a petition because your colleagues wanted you to do so. Although in your inner heart you thought that this is not the right thing to do, but everybody wrote on the petition signed and then they brought it to you and said you just sign it. You said yes and signed. You said yes to your protest because all your friends are participating in it. You did not even think whether uh, the protest is going for a good cause or a bad cause or whether it is really related to your innermost goals, aspirations or not. Just because everybody did it, you wanted to jump into it. Now, these are occasions where you have said yes, where you will be saying yes, when you really wanted to say no. There could be many other occasions, I just highlighted some of the most important ones, uh, especially the South Asians, the Indians tend to say yes, under pressure from uh, society and people around. Now, is this a real choice or actually amounting to compliance? Now, compliance is a disposition or tendency to yield to the will of others. Are we really choosing something in saying yes or are we actually yielding to the will of others? Now, if you observe this carefully from choosing an ice cream to marrying the wrong person, why do many people say yes when they should have actually said no? Whether it is simple choice of an ice cream or a lifelong choice of marrying a person, why do they just say yes when they should have said no? Mostly because they believe that it is easy to do what others expect us to do because living a life of our own is difficult. So, it is easy to follow a set pattern. It is easy to maintain the status quo, it is easy to do what people have been doing for ages than do something that is different and looking original. So, that may be uncomfortable and that is the belief. And these people believe that making decisions based on others opinion keeps them in a comfort zone. So, they think that only when you follow the decisions of others, you will be able to live in a comfort zone. But in fact, they put themselves in a compliant zone, risking failure, causing them stress and depression. There is an article uh, on Times of India, where uh, uh, there is a very good interesting view by Andy Molinsky, uh, who analyzes as how do people fall into this compliance trap? Why do we get into this uh, trap of saying yes, 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 although we should have said no, no, no. So, to quote from Andy Molinsky, you have learned to behave in ways that you are expected to behave. So, this is how you fall into the compliance trap. You have learned to behave in ways that you are expected to behave, perhaps by your parents or your extended family or your culture. Over time through repetition and by dutifully fulfilling others' expectations, you internalize these behaviors as your own 
even if they do not actually reflect who you are. So, the problem here is your strongest innermost needs and desires are not actually met. It is not your interest, but you are actually complying to the expectations of others and whatever choices you make do not reflect the real you. And we often fall into this compliance trap thinking that the known devil is better than an unknown angel, meaning something that is bad if you have known that for uh, 10 years, 20 years. So, uh, thinking that uh, uh, this man takes liquor, but otherwise he is good. So, marrying him is ok, because he is earning uh, quite a good amount of money. So, thinking that he has only this limitation, then getting married to somebody who is totally unknown. So, the known devil is better than an unknown angel. The known choice with its own limitations is better than a choice that you will make with some unforeseen risk is what people often uh, think and by that kind of thinking they actually fall into this compliance trap. But happiness in life depends on your ability to risk meeting that unknown angel. The more you are able to risk meeting this unknown angel that is the unforeseen benefits you are not able to see that at hand now, but then once you take the risk. So, you certainly get some benefits. Now, if you are able to identify that, work on it, take the risk. So, then only you will be able to have happiness throughout in your life. Now, life itself comprises three C's. The first C is amounting to matter of choices and based on the choices you actually take chances and depending on the chances that you take mostly chances in the form of opportunities that you utilize your ability to take risk even to the extent of taking unknown uh, unforeseen activities which come to you in the form of opportunities so these are the ones that will contribute to changes. And once you make choice, take chance and then you will be able to change your life for the better. Now, if you skip making choice, that is the first uh, aspect of life and if you give that completely to somebody else, so you are not going to the second one, you are not taking the chance, you are not going to experience and you are not even taking any effort about changing your life for the better. Now, having said this, I would like to look at the next aspect, how to make your own choice. So, I said that first make choice and then take chance and then try to change your life, but how to make your own choice. The first and the foremost lesson maxim is that do not say yes when you want to say no. In fact, there is a very brilliant book written on this title. I have given a, a reference to that at the end. It is about assertiveness and it differentiates assertiveness from aggressiveness. Do not say yes when you want to say no and it is a must read book. Now, why do you say yes? You say yes because you do not want to hurt others. Okay. Hurting others will make you feel bad, so you do not want to hurt others you want to make others happy. You want to show that you care for others more than yourself, especially people who are beloved, you just want to show them that uh, your happiness is much more important than mine. So, you want to show that you care for others more than yourself. You say yes, because you want others to feel pleased in your company. It is that appeasement policy that you want all others around you to be happy. So, you say yes, yes, yes to whatever they want you to do. And in terms of uh, elders, in terms of boss, in terms of higher authority, you want to show others that you are obedient and respectful. 
you do not want to appear to be disobedient, disrespectful to uh, elders or senior people. So, you want to show that uh, you are actually a very nice person, a very good person. So, in order to show that you keep on saying yes, but do not say that when you want to say no and that is the first step in making a choice of your own. Now, in any given moment choose growth, there is a famous quote from Abraham Maslow, so whose self actualization theory we had discussed in uh, the previous course, you can take a quick look at that if you wish, but then at this point a very famous psychologist and then he says in any given moment we have two options to step forward into growth or to step back into safety you step forward into growth or you step back into safety. It is amounting to saying yes and taking risk or saying no and then going back to safety. Growth must be chosen again and again, fear must be overcome again and again. So, his conclusion is that choose growth. So, going back to safety is fear, but then try to overcome that again and again. All it amounts to is telling you that you should be assertive. There is another interesting book that I want you to read completely that is written by Stanley Phillips and Nancy Austin, The Assertive You. What is assertiveness according to these authors? To quote from them, assertiveness is the ability to express yourself and your rights without violating the rights of others. Assertiveness is the ability to express yourself and your rights without violating the rights of others. It is creating a win-win situation. It is not like I lose, you win or I win, you lose. I respect my right as well as I will not violate your right and allow me to respect my right. It is my right to say yes when I want to say yes and no when I want to say no. In other words, assertiveness is your ability to say no when you want to say no and say yes when you want to say yes. It is not the other way round. That is, you say no when you actually want to say yes and you say yes when actually you want to say no. Now, in this context, uh, I would like to conclude by giving you one small exercise, it is just fun, uh, it is a practical task, you can do it. What I want to tell you and what I want you to do is this, in three different situations practice assertiveness and observe how you feel about yourself. Take note of your comfort or discomfort. So, what do I mean by this? three different situations, maybe one situation when you go and then uh, ask for a favor from someone, it may be your classmate or somebody. In another situation that you are dealing with some uh, higher authority, in another situation you are dealing with somebody, a government employee <coughs> who need not respond to you at all. So, any three different situations where normally you are compelled to say yes, try to say no and in certain cases you are compelled to say no. For example, a simple thing like uh, there is a very aggressive friend of you who always says that let us all take coffee, but you want to take tea or you want to eat that uh, chocolate or something. So, when everybody says yes, you have the courage to say no. No, I think I should be uh, taking that chocolate, I do not want to have tea or coffee. So, say no, say yes in situations, three different situations where normally you are avoiding doing that. And when you do that, take note whether you are feeling comfortable and you see the behavior of others and whether they are comfortable with you or they are feeling some sense of discomfort or they feeling annoyed or they are trying to threaten you or are they accepting you. Now, see how people react and then you act first 
try to show assertiveness. Now, this is just the beginning and I want to continue telling you more about assertiveness and then learning how to actually say no, how to be the real assertive person and why it is important to be an assertive one. Let me conclude this with another interesting thought from the most famous American poet Robert Frost and one of his most famous poems, The Road Not Taken concludes with these three lines. It goes like this, two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less travelled by and that has made all the difference. So, two roads actually implies two choices diverged in a wood. So, in a wood is like a very unknown path, a new journey where the destination is not very clear and you have to make either this or that. And everybody was choosing the one that is travelled by so many people, the beaten track. The persona of the poem says, he took the one less travelled by, although it was initially not clear but he says and that has made all the difference, implying that it has completely transformed him, it has completely brought lot of positive growth in his life, implying that maybe the ones who took the beaten track may not be as happy as he is at the end or maybe most of them are regretting because they took the beaten track unlike him. So, keep this thought in uh, your mind and try to travel the less traveled road as far as possible because that will make all the difference. Must read books, one is do not say yes when you want to say no, the other one is the assertive view. I also give the link to the article why you should not live by others rules. So, try to take a quick look at the article and then try to get these books and then uh, uh, form a small library of your own read it not at the time of the course itself, but even whenever you get time even after the course is over also you can read them because these are books that, uh, uh, that will help you change your life not only now forever. Wish you all success and uh, I take leave of you now. Thank you for watching this video.